What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool, back here again for Practical Machinist with our coverage of IMTS 2022 here in Chicago. Joining me now is my friend Joshua from Sugami. Thank you very much for joining yeah, us today. Thanks for coming out to our booth. How's the show been so far? It's been fantastic. I've really been surprised at how busy the show's been. Three days and I've been steadily busy the whole time. So and you it's got great. two more still to go. Yeah, absolutely. Three more, two more. Three more. Now, what are we taking a look at here behind us? This looks like some kind of lathe to me, but I know this is a little bit deceiving. What do yeah, we have? absolutely. So this is the Sagami BW329Z. This is a uh, gang, split gang uh, Swiss turning machine. So it's a sliding headstock machine. So if you're familiar with a lathe, uh, typically those, the main spindle is stationary other than the rotation. You typically have turrets that do the cutting. On this machine, we have two gang plates on either side of the main spindle. So what's nice about this particular configuration is you can get two tools in the cut on the main spindle side. At the know, same time? At the same time. Wow. Right, so it's a very productive machine. Um, also very good at busy parts with a lot of features, uh, a lot of complexity and difficult materials um, because we're splitting up that cutting between two tools at the same time. Um, also on the back working side of this machine, you have an eight station block here wow. that addresses the subspindle side for more overlap machining. So what that allows us to do is while the machine is cutting a fresh part on the main spindle side, the subspindle will then finish the secondary op of the part that just came off the main. So you're going to get a complete part in one setup, sometimes a very complex part even. Right. Um, you know, complete in one setup, no work in progress, and a very efficient high production machine. And you put something like a bar feeder on this and it's just going to run all day. Absolutely. So typically we would sell this machine with a 12 foot magazine style bar wow. feeder. So that can hold quite a bit of material. It'll load parts automatically, it'll change bar as it exhausts the bar stock and remove the remnants automatically. So really the way we sell you the machine, it gives you everything you need to let that machine run in a lights out scenario where you don't have an operator standing in front of it all the time. And it's just, you know, gonna sit there and make parts, you know, very stable, you know, very repeatable process. So. And while I would love to stay and look at this some more, I know we have a lot of machines we wanna take a peek at. Why don't all we right. go check out the next one? Okay. And as you guys can see here, this booth is enormous. How many machines do we have, have here we today? Have 10 machines on the booth, and then we also have two at partner booths in the Ooh. show. So a total of 12 machines in the show. Lots week. to check out here at IMTS. So what do we have here? Okay, so now a bit of a different style machine. This is the Sagami TMA8F. So this is really more of a, what we would refer to as a mill turn or a multitasking sort of a machine. Okay. So what you have here on the main spindle side, it's a fixed headstock type. 65 millimeters uh, through the spindle. We have it set up with a collet chuck in here now. Ordinarily, it would include an eight inch three jaw chuck on the main spindle side. On the sub spindle side, it takes a six inch three jaw chuck or wow. you know any common three um, collet chuck setup will work. The big thing about this machine, it's built around a turning sort of an architecture, but it has a tool changer and you can see it's got a milling spindle akin to what a horizontal machining center would wow. have. So now, you notice that that spindle is um, it's doing some fairly rapid, uh, you know, small machining with a very small tool there. So the nice thing about this machine, that spindle has 15 horsepower, 20,000 RPM maximum, and um, you know it's capable of holding up to 60 tools in the magazine. So for your 60 tools in that 60 magazine, tools, yes, sir. Wow. So you know for your complex parts for medical and aerospace, it's uh, it's got the capabilities of doing a lot of features in a smaller part. Um, you know, also this machine is extremely heavy and rigid. It's over 18,000 pounds. Which is good. Yeah, heavy absolutely. Good. So, yes. you know, I have customers that are doing uh, super alloy parts, doing uh, medical, you know, like shoulder balls out of cobalt chrome, which is a very difficult material. Extremely. And so, yeah, this is a fantastic machine, really sort of one of our higher end, you know, units for bigger, bigger parts. And it does come with the round of shot system. Well, typically we would include the Rinishaw system Rinishaw. in your quote for the machine. That's one of our most popular options these days because the customers that are using this are typically doing intricate work with small tools. And so that Rinishaw non-contact system is actually checking with a laser to make sure that that tool's still there and it's not broken so we don't miss features on our part. Also, we, uh, we use a Rinishaw uh, spindle mounted probe in here so that we can check features on the part in, 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 you know, in process. And if you break a tool, will this machine automatically pull the next tool in the magazine if you have it set up that it way? It can. If you have it set up correctly, you can use sister tooling and pull redundant tools based on you know, the feedback from that Rinishaw, or you can also use you know, part counters, or there's various other uh, technologies that we can integrate to you know, monitor tools by load as well. Right. And so 
but having that 60 station magazine really helps you when you're doing parts that have difficult materials where the tool wear is high, you know, especially in this day and age where staffing is a problem for Huge every problem. shop. Having those redundant tools allows you to cut difficult materials in an unattended environment where, you know, in the past you'd have to have somebody that really monitored that machine very closely. And while I'd love to say and look at this machine, we have a lot of machines to go at. Let's we take do. a walk. All right. Now this one, I'm seeing some kind of UV guard on that window, which tells yeah. me we're gonna do something crazy in here. Yeah, that's a good observation. What are we looking at? So what we're looking at here is the Sagami S205 Laser Swiss. So, Laser Swiss. Yeah, so that green glass is all about protecting the operator or anybody standing around from getting that flash from the, the laser cutting. So this is still a fully functional CNC Swiss machine and has all of the normal cutting tools like a standard Sagami S205 would have. But if you notice up top, above the gang plate there, and you may have to pull your camera in, there's a laser cutting head that's pointing straight down. Oh, wow. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, what we found is there's a lot of medical applications out there where they're cutting uh, tubing stock with a, with a laser tube cutter, but, you know, oftentimes those parts have to be turned on a turning machine and then loaded into a tube cutter. So what we did was integrated a system that allows you to do both things in the same machine. All in the same spot. Absolutely. And so, you know, we've done everything to fully integrate this machine with the laser cutter and the power supply. We've got some proprietary technology that allows us to adjust the focal length from within our CNC program. Also, we can, you know, we can use differential gases. Mm -hmm. We can change between two different gases. We can adjust the pressure on the fly from the part program. And that really gives us like ultimate control over that cutting process. So what we're seeing here today, you know, with all this extra technology in there and that laser, we, you know, we put enough guarding, enough of the, the glass on the machine that this is like class one laser product. So this is no more dangerous to your operators than the copy machine in the front office is. Really? Yeah. And especially coming with a big bar sock like that, I don't think you're a bar feeder like that. I don't think an operator needs to be here much at all anyway. No, absolutely this not. Thing's yeah. gonna run this thing's going to run unattended day So this in, machine has all of the you know, basics that you need to run unattended. you got the magazine bar feeder that's going to keep feeding in stock. As the parts finish, they're going to be uh, you know, ex uh, exit into the part catcher and down this conveyor belt right here where they'll be captured outside the machine. And oftentimes we'll integrate like rotary collection tables to you know, higher capacity storage for parts. And you know, one of the things I really like to point out on the part that we're doing today is it's a very unique um, application. We're actually making two separate parts by turning and laser cutting. And then while we make the first part, it's get chucked in the subspindle. The main spindle is going to make the second part, which is a mating part, and we're going to bring those two together. We're going to use that laser to weld them together. You can weld in this machine. So we're as well. cutting, and welding, and marking on the part, all with the same laser. It's it's ten machines in one. It, it slices, it dices, it does everything. That's it's crazy. But besides uh, medical, aerospace would really like this kind of machine as yep, well. Yeah, aerospace does. We see some applications in um, in appliances, and you know we're really finding you know honestly. It's such a new technology to the industry that we had to we had to learn how to how to apply it, right? So we start with medical, but then we've branched out into a whole bunch of different categories since then. Like yeah. everything, it starts up here, but then it trickles down as people find use for it and yeah. realize that they can use it for those applications. Anything that needs really small cross holes, really intricate, oftentimes would be features that you'd make on an EDM, right. which is a fair, slower process and, and secondary you know, machine work that you have to do. We can integrate that in the machine and the laser cuts very rapidly with a very narrow kerf width. So you know, rather than trying to mill with a tiny end mill where uh, we, still leave a, we still leave a radius in the corners, we can make very sharp corners very rapidly. So it's really a fantastic technology for those guys that need those sort of features on their parts. So. Absolutely, and moving right along because again, we could spend probably all day talking about this machine. Yep. We have another machine we want to take a look Absolutely. at. Absolutely. Let's go take a walk. So I believe the next one we were looking at is this machine right here. What makes this machine different? What are we looking at here? Okay, so we saw the TMA-8 earlier on the other side of the booth. And the one real key thing about that machine that we pointed out was that continuous B axis with a tool changer, 20,000 RPM, 15 horsepower spindle. So this machine has that same feature. You'll notice it's parked up high now. Oh yeah, it's sitting in so the So same, same sort of format here, same spindle. We have a 40 station tool changer on this machine. So this takes Capto C4 tooling. And this is a sliding headstock Swiss machine. So there's no other machines that I'm aware of in the industry that offers you the ability to feed it like a Swiss. No. With a guide bushing. 
and that full 15 horsepower milling spindle that really gives you some fantastic milling capabilities and some strength. And you know, in, incorporated in that machine, it's also what we refer to as chucker convertible. Which so we is, can run it with the guide bushing or we can take the guide bushing out of the machine and run shorter parts without feeding through that guide bushing. Extreme versatility is all I'm hearing here. Absolutely. This is crazy. Yep. So another thing I'd like to point out is, uh, it's gonna be hard to see in here, but if you look straight down, there's a, a gang plate underneath the main spindle. And there's 10 tools on that. Those are dedicated for the sub spindle use. So what that gives us with this machine is a whole lot of capability to overlap machine, right? We're gonna use that B-axis tool against the main. At the same time, we can do five different milling features and five turning features on the sub spindle side, or we can also use that B-axis on the sub spindle. And that's simultaneous. So you can be doing multiple things Correct. at the same time. Yeah. So what we see for this machine is oftentimes parts like this. Wow. So you'd think that was a part that came off of a milling machine. Absolutely. Right? So the nice thing about this is it's a bar fed machine, right? So that if you can fit your part in a one and a half inch diameter bar or smaller, then you have what amounts to a horizontal milling machine with secondary machining and that it's bar fed. can feed all day. Right. That's absolutely insane. So that's like a, you know, example like a bone plate that would be used for, you know, medical repairs. No, absolutely. So machined from, you know, from round bar, uh, rather than when you look at a lot of times the way those parts get made in the field, there'll be multiple milling machine ops, like maybe one to put Flipping a dovetail in the part, mounted in the fixture on the five axis machine, machine five sides, then flip it, do the bottom side. And there's a lot of work in progress there. When you go here, you're going straight from bar to the box. And same question that I had for when we were talking about that laser machine. Are people aware that you can even do this right now? Because the way I know this technology, I wouldn't even think of running a part like this on there. Are you having a hard time with buy-in or are you see, seeing people getting really excited about this kind of tech? I would say that five years ago, we had a hard time with the buy-in. Right. Because it looks complex, it looks expensive, it looks like how do I learn how to do that, right? Absolutely. But in 2022, this, these machines have found their time because when you look at the, you know, what are the pressures that your machine shop has, floor space is a big requirement. Huge one. You look at the size of this machine, it's 64 square feet of your floor space. It's tiny. So it's very small by comparison to the mill turn type machines that you see out there. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, I live and work in Northern Indiana in the heart of all the medical country there. And I have customers that are making extremely small, intricate titanium spinal implants on this thing that have very close tolerances, very high finish requirements. And this machine is, does a fantastic job at that. Again, as you're gonna see on every Sagami, it's a very heavy, solid one piece base casting. The machine weighs over 15,000 pounds, comes with glass scales included in the standard package. All of the FANUC five axis options that you need to really take advantage of the five axis are included in the standard package on this machine. And speaking of standard packages, let's go look at this last machine. We All have right. a chance to take a peek at here. So this is the SS327 three five ax. Right. So what makes this one special? So this one is a more conventional CNC sliding headstock Swiss machine, 32 millimeters capacity. But what really makes this machine special is the is the B axis. So we have a compact Swiss machine with dual gang plates, just like any other Sagami that you're going to see. But if you look on the on the rear gang there, there are four live tools mounted on a swiveling B axis that can be used on any angle. Um, also, you know, one of the things I like to point out on this machine is that, um, you know, the, the way that, that B-axis is mounted, it's a full trunnion setup on this machine. So you have the servo motor that, that you know, positions the B-axis mounted up top. It's got a braking mechanism to hold the, the angle if you're just doing a, a fixed angle work. And it also has a lower support on the pivot down there at the bottom. Now, so that thing's supported top and bottom for best rigidity. I, ca I can't help but laugh because every time I think you've crammed more features into another machine, you come and you show me something like this. <laughs> this is mind blowing, uh, mind blowing. Who's putting these on the floor right now? Uh, so these see a lot of different industries. You know, there's there's quite a bit in medical, um, some firearms manufacturer. This is a very popular machine with I them. I even thought of that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. And you know, basically anybody who has, you know inch and a quarter and smaller parts that have some angular features to them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the thing is, as we move on, there's a general trend towards miniaturization in every industry these days. And so you're starting to see a lot more of these intricate angular and surface features in smaller parts these days Absolutely. where you didn't used to. So that's really the strength of this machine. Um, one other thing I'd like to point out on that B axis, I don't know if you noticed, but 
the bottom two spindles are a different color than the top two are there. Yes, are. Those bottom two are a modular type spindle. So in the past, the prior version of this machine, all four of those were live tools, but they were fixed. You couldn't remove them. They had to be what they were. Because we have those two cartridge type, those can be removed and you can put a speeder unit in there. Yep, absolutely. Where the standard spindle speed 7,000 RPM. When you go to the speeder, you can get up to 20,000 RPM. So you can really do that surfacing Crazy work tooling. with absolutely. small tools. And also this machine has the unique capability that we can mount a thread whirling unit wow. in place of those two bottom live tool spindles. And that means if you're a guy who does some medical bone screw work, now we have the ability to mount our whirler direct to our B axis. And if you've ever had a set of thread whirler on a Swiss machine before, it's usually a little bit of a difficult process of tramming the angle in just Absolutely. so. Because it's mounted to the B axis, now we simply call the helix angle in our part program and it goes right to it with the B axis. So it makes the setup easy. And looking at machines like this, if people want to learn more, where can we find more about you online? So go to our uh, website, sagamiamerica.com. That's the best place for all of our resources. You can find, you know, uh, you can find a, a page for each of our models of machines. You can download PDF versions of the brochures. We have links to our YouTube channel where we can see videos of all kinds of t topics, you know, machine overviews, uh, training topics, and, you know, pretty much everything. It's all, you know, basically reachable from that sagamiamerica.com. And of course, they're here at IMTS all week, so make sure you stop by and check them out. Joshua, thank you very much for having us. Yeah, thanks, Ian. Have a great day. All right.